we're going to give you a start bench cut. And we got three of the league's premier forwards up in here, and they all have very different cases. The three players we got today is Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, and Kawhi Leonard. Now, if you look at just their peak, and we're talking right now, not all time, but even just their, the best that they could play right now, I think Kawhi might be the best one here. But then you think, oh, he's pretty injured. And then you think as a talent, well, Jason Tatum, he might be better than Jimmy Butler, but I just watched Jimmy Butler beat him. I watched Jimmy Butler almost beat him last year, and I watched him beat him in 2020. So when they go head-to-head and match up, he gets the better of him a lot. But the talented player, I can still see you taking him over the other guys. And then Kawhi is such an X factor with what he does. I think this is a very interesting debate, and I'll give my personal take on this last, but I'll start with you, Steph. Give me your start bench cut with Jimmy, Jason, and Kawhi. You pretty much hit the nail on the head with pretty much everything, but I kind of went with, you know, both who's more, I guess, talented, but also who you're looking toward building with. So I started Jason Tatum, benched Kawhi, and I cut Jimmy Butler. Now, I personally, I, I think this postseason, it puts a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths regarding Jason Tatum. Uh, he did not play very well by any stretch of the imagination. But let's not mistake it. He he has an argument as the most talented dude out of these three. And I, I think going forward that he's going to be a guy that he he's arguably gonna can be a top five player in this league. You, you could argue it. Some may even argue it now. I'm, I'm not one of those people, but so there are some people that I've seen argue that. And I think Jason Tatum is a guy that this postseason was a one-off, but we've seen him play very well in the postseason. And I think he's going to get back to that good postseason form that we've seen him at before. Um, with Kawhi, you hit the nail on the head with – at his peak, he's probably the best out of all of these players, for sure. But injury concerns are a thing, and it seems to start happening around the same time each year, around the most important time that you need him around the year. So there's a postseason concern there, but the reason I'd rather bench him is he's no mistake about it. He's one of the best postseason performers of all time when he does play, and I if he's healthy and he's right, I always trust him in the postseason. And that, that's my most important time to hoop. And I, I would trust a healthy Kawhi in the postseason most more than I trust a healthy Jimmy Butler because though healthy Jimmy Butler is playoff Jimmy as we know him to be, there are has been two times now that we've seen he hasn't quite finished. Yes, he's played amazingly throughout – the playoff push and throughout their playoff run and to carry an eighth seed to the finals is huge, no doubt. But this is the second time we've seen him get there, but not quite finish. And with Kawhi, I've seen him finish it off. Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum, we've seen him actually closer to winning the finals than Jimmy Butler, which is crazy to say he was two games away from it. So Let's let's make no mistake, JT is more skilled, Kawhi is more of a tactical, and Jimmy Butler, to me, he's the very, very hard worker that plays amazingly. Great player, great playoff performer, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to Jason Tatum and Kawhi being in that conversation, I have to take them over Jimmy Butler, and that's not even a knock on Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I'm there with you as far as Jimmy's concerned. He was the comfortable guy to cut for me. Like you say, he's had some moments where he's, especially in the postseason, rose to the occasion. But especially from the regular season standpoint, he just does not turn up the same way that Tatum does, the same way that Kawhi does when he's healthy. It's just not at the same level. And he's integral to Miami, integral to their offense, and continues to be great defensively. But he's just not quite there, especially on the offensive end, compared to what you can get night in and night out from guys like Tatum and Kawhi. Who I started between Tatum and Kawhi was definitely a bit more of a debate. I ended up starting Kawhi. And the biggest thing that I could hold against Kawhi to not start him was the injury concerns. 
But outside of that, I'm taking Kawhi over Jason Tatum if they're both healthy every day of the week. So I had to go with Kawhi. Like you've mentioned, he, I mean, we, I was just arguing for him within the last week or two that he is the greatest playoff riser of all time. And he definitely has an argument to be in that conversation. He's done it for the Clippers when healthy. He did it for the Raptors. He did it for the Spurs. He continues to be a very good regular season performer, not quite as good as he once was because he continues to load manage. And even when he does play, you can tell he doesn't turn it up quite as much as he used to, even when he, to the level he did in Toronto, but he still shows up night in and night out as an elite two way player every time he's on the floor. And like I said, the only thing that I could hold back against him was injuries. But hell, let me start him if he's injured. Jason Tatum's on that bench, and he's going to slide right in. So Tatum is my guy coming in off the bench. Great two-way talent in his own right. You mentioned the playoff struggles this year, Steph, but still someone who has a lot of playoff success, someone who continues to create more on the offensive end, continues to put up more numbers statistically on the offensive end. We'll see now, moving into this year, if those postseason struggles will give him a little bit of encouragement to stop settling for so many of these threes he seems to love but great great player great two-way talent continues to improve as a passer and a playmaker continues to improve especially over the last couple of years on the defensive end to being a borderline elite talent on that end so great talent and a great player to have slide in off the bench when Kawhi inevitably does get injured but until he does get injured Jason Tatum is on my bench Man, so you were really choosing that team building aspect. Uh, I respect both your guys' picks, but I'm also very glad that even with just three of us here, we are all different. And I don't know if y'all know what that means for how I'm about to go with this. Are you starting, Jimmy? If this was Jimmy just fan. if this was just based on the playoffs, I would start Jimmy. This I, I view this more as right now in 2023. So I'm more of a what have you done for me lately? Now I'm not gonna say I didn't take in anything in the past because all these guys all have recent histories of doing pretty successful things. Kawhi in 2021, Tatum in 2022, Butler 2020 and 2023. So there is still recent success with all these guys, and those are taken into account now. But I take into account like. Kawhi almost five years ago now in Toronto to judge him currently as a Clipper. Would I take him, especially in San Antonio? No. Would I take Jimmy Butler as a Bull? No. So not all time, but not just like who played the best in the 2022-2023 season. So a little bit of a balance there. I will say I started Jason Tatum. This is the kind of commonality here with me and Steph. And ever nobody cut Tatum. And for me, for Tatum, the reason why I'm starting him, because these are all very talented players, it's his balance of the regular season and the playoffs. Much like Jimmy, Tatum has had some ups and downs in the playoffs. I think there has definitely been times where he has not shown up. I mean, summer early, like 2019, he didn't play good, but he was like a second year in the league. Not great at them. Uh, I think it was the year Jalen Brown was out for the playoffs. Like they f- like fizzled out pretty quick, but he even has some really good games then. And there's definitely a lot of a, a lot more ups there for him. But then at the end of the day, Kawhi load manages heavily in the regular season, and Jimmy Butler is not the same caliber of player in the regular season. So just looking at what you're going to give me for 82, even if Tatum is a little bit worse than those two guys in the playoffs, and this is a guy with a 50 point playoff game on record. And a guy with a clutch 50-point play-in game, I believe. So to say, like, he can still pull up in those big moments, it's just the fact that Kawhi and Jimmy are such high-level playoff players. But he just has to be the starter because I know he's probably going to give me at least 70 regular season games as well, where Jimmy might give me a lot, but they're not going to be great, and Kawhi's probably giving me, like, 40 to 50. I'm benching Jimmy Butler. And... It just comes down to the fact that Jimmy might not be the best player in the regular season, but Kawhi's not a player in the regular season. He's not there. Half the time, he's missing the whole season for something. He's never going to play back-to-back, and he'll probably miss a couple of stretches of the season with some nagging injuries. All that to say, then you're probably going to get to the playoffs, and he's probably not going to be there for you. 
In 2020, he was there. They choked. In 2021, he played really well. He got hurt halfway through. And since then, he ain't really been that available at all. So when you look at all that, there's a reason why this Clippers team has come up short over and over. And the primary culprit is Kawhi's lack of ability to stay healthy. And if I'm saying, who do I want on my team? Well, as most people well know that watch any content takes I give, I value the playoffs very heavily. And if you're not there, I can't value that. Kawhi, he won my favorite team, their only ring. And it was some of the most entertaining basketball I've ever watched. But he's not going to do it again. It's not a what if. It's not an injury risk. It's an injury given. He's not going to be there. And if he is there, you know it's only temporarily. And for that, I have to cut him. When I look at what he's done versus what Jimmy Butler's done recently, the past four years, Jimmy Butler led his team to the finals when they probably they were not the best roster in that conference. Year two, shortest offseason in NBA history. You can you can hold it against them if you want to, and I don't even blame you. That's an outlier year. They made the playoffs, went out in round one pretty sad. I'll even take that as a hit. Come back the next year. Roster is not great. That roster was should not have been there. One shot away from the finals again against a really good team in Boston. And then this year, once again, they shouldn't have been there. They were the eight seed. They were three minutes away from not even making the playoffs. And he led them to the finals. Now, did some of those role players step up a lot more? Did he have a good coach? Yes. But all of these guys have good coaches. And honestly, all of them have good supporting cast as well. So that's not really an argument I want to hear when it comes to this. Jimmy Butler took them and he led them to that point. Now, after the Knicks series, he got a little banged up and it did lead to a drop in production from where he was in the first two series of this playoffs and especially things he was doing in 2020 or even late in the 2022 run. But overall, of the recent couple years, sample size, what he's given me in the playoffs, not only being available, but the high-level play he's given me is just better than what Kawhi's done. And to add on the fact that he's probably going to play at least 20 more regular season games than Kawhi Leonard is. There's no way that I can possibly take Kawhi Leonard over Jimmy Butler right now, knowing that he's not going to be there. I, I I love it. I didn't think you were going to take Jason Tatum as starting. That that surprised me. That, that really surprised me. But I will say I genuinely do like that pick. I like that take. With Jason Tatum, he, he just – Bro needs to incorporate the mid-range game again. That's that's all he needs, bro. He just needs to get back to being that true three-level scorer because I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I agree. And that's when he broke some of his scoring droughts in the postseason. He finally just started getting downhill and getting a few floaters up, getting a few 12-footers up. And, like, he's done it. We know he can do it. He just has decided not to as of late. So hopefully he gets back to that. But I don't mind your take, Gabe, because I'll be honest. I think cutting Kawhi makes more sense than benching him if you are inj- worried about the injury concerns. Because like you say, you're going to have Jimmy for 20, 30 plus more games than you're going to have Kawhi for. You know you're going to have him in the postseason compared to what you're going to get in Kawhi's case because you can hope that he's going to be healthy. But like you say, it's more than likely than it is not that it's a given he's going to get that injury at some point in time and end up hurting your team's chances. So if that's your concern and you're worried about the injuries, then you know, why not give me a guy who's still a all-star and borderline all-NBA caliber player, even still during the regular season, and then rises to whatever he does in the postseason and you know is going to be available. So that's a fair argument because Kawhi ain't going to be around the whole time. I'll just... I'm taking Kawhi for what I can get him for, but if you don't want that, then that's completely reasonable. I just don't like what ifs. He's such he's such a what if with just oh I I hope he can be there. And (laughs) at this point, when it's like recurring nagging injuries like that, it's like Chris Paul's hamstring, bro. It's a ticking time bomb, and you know it's gonna go off at some point. It's just an inherent thing that's going to happen. He's not going to be healthy. And I just, I can't, like, I, if I'm trying to build a team, I like certainty. And if that's, if I, I'll say this, I'll take inconsistent basketball play over inconsistent availability 
any day of the week. Because if you're giving me subpar production, you're giving me production. And a Jimmy Butler, reg, regular season Jimmy Butler, is better than the bench player on the Clippers who's filling in for Kawhi when he's out, you know? That's a fair point. I didn't even think about that. That's a very fair point. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of why I mentioned, like, like you say, it's very fair that you want – Jimmy over him just because like it's better than nothing for whatever amount of games you're getting nothing from Kawhi if that's your concern then you might as well get rid of the guy who you're going to not get anything from for X amount of games every year and instead take what is still very good production from the other guy and I, I still think above all those Jason Tatum is the best player out of all these three right now so I, I personally, that's how I feel. I can't speak for all of us, but I think he's the m- most skilled. But in terms of what you're looking for, for all 82 and then the postseason included, Jason Tatum on both ends is a great player. Yeah, that's kind of what set me off of the end. Like I said, I kind of opened my argument with if it was just playoffs, because when Jimmy rises to the occasion, the best Jimmy Butler game, I'm like, blown away just completely taken it back like this is some of the greatest basketball i've ever seen played but Hmm. jason tatum just more consistently i feel like gives me a little bit higher of a level and that's kind of what swung it for me at the end i will say to just up the key holder chaos a little bit and because there's only three of us here so i won't take as long i'm gonna slide one more player in here similar position and i almost put him in here originally so we're going to make this a start bench trade cut. So we'll just – just so I have another word in there to rank these four players. Mr. Lakers fan, if you slid LeBron James into this, where would he go? Would he be an instant start for you or would you have to think about it? Because he's been a little banged up over the past couple of years. And Lakers had a good run, but it took him a couple of years to get there, whereas some of the other guys in this list have been towards the top for – a little bit more consistently the past couple of years. You know, you know how you started this off with saying Lakers fan. Yes, I'm a Lakers fan, not a LeBron fan, and I'm at that point where I think we're at trade LeBron. So, with that being said, he would out of the players that we have, he's going to that trade because, for one. I know he's going to give me premium assets no matter what. There's no question about it. Now, it may be difficult for the other team because they know that he's more than likely leaving whenever he has the opportunity to play with Bronny, whenever Bronny comes to the league. But with these other players, I, I, I feel like I have a better shot with winning with them because of the fact that With LeBron, you have to have a certain team built around him in order to win. And with Jason Tatum, he could create his own shot. He is gotten very good at playmaking. He's a pretty good catch-and-shoot guy. He can play with his back to the basket. Jimmy Butler can do it all, do everything. A lot of these guys are, you know, plug-and-play, whereas LeBron, you have to have a certain team around him. Um Love LeBron, and that has that doesn't go against him all time and his legacy. But I think he's at a point now, and especially with watching Lakers basketball, he's at a point now where I'd much rather have a player that's much more, and I hate using this word because it's overused, but much more portability. I I would well, – well, actually, let me not say that because LeBron can play one through five. I understand that. But in terms of the, the play style that your team is going to have and the kind of roster that you have to put around uh, your star player in this case. And LeBron, you know he has to have shooters in a certain roster around him. And if you don't have that roster, it's going to look ugly very quick. And I've already seen it with my team. Yeah, I, I can't really disagree with that. I'm probably going ahead and trading Braun as well. Uh, I think as of today, I'm taking Kawhi or Tatum as the better player on a team, but I'm probably still taking LeBron over Jimmy. And like you say, you're going to get a ton back for LeBron if you are moving off of him, even at his age, even with his contract situation. You're still getting a lot back for LeBron. 
And if I'm keeping a Tatum, I'm keeping a Kawhi, like you mentioned, like I don't have much to add, but you just have a lot easier of a time fitting the roster around those types of dudes than you do a LeBron. Um, but I, I don't have an argument to take Jimmy over LeBron. LeBron's still going to get over Jimmy for me, but I'm definitely shipping him out. Kawhi and Tatum are still my guys.